Hi. What's up? What's Isaiah 118? Let us come, let us reason together. Though our sins may be like scarlet, they will be made white as snow. Yeah, I know that. I didn't know it was Isaiah 118. Your name is Tony? No, well, my, my name's Tony. I mean, what? I'm it's Dave. 106 out here. Hi, so, Dave. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Good. You a follower of Christ? Yep. Yeah. Are you? Uh, do you live here locally? I do. What What church do you worship at? I don't. Yeah. I go. You know, I've done some church hopping. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, on Sundays I get my daughter. I've been looking for like a Bible study, but I just can't find nobody I really want to get saved by. I do it on Facebook. Take your daughter to church. She needs to hear the good news of the gospel, right? Yeah, but yeah, she's like two, and we don't, you know, we take take all day. I ain't even got a car anyway. So I just uh, ride the bus. Uh, you know? Well, there's a couple of churches in walking distance for me, but I don't want to go there. Uh, what kind of churches are those? Um, I don't know exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, God, uh, God calls us to fellowship with one another. That's very important. You know, and we need that mutual accountability and love and support. And, and, and you're nobody, not going to get that on a TV. In my, in my life, really. My kids. But no, on Facebook, you know, I got lots of friends on Facebook. Yeah, but it, but it's not the same as someone coming like, over and yeah, hey, Dave, how you doing? Yeah, you know, how can I be praying for you? And, Right, I mean, because everybody thinks they know people on Facebook, and then you meet them, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pay attention. Yeah. What brings you down today? Um, I'm just out, walking around. Just hanging out? Yeah. What do you do when you're not hanging out or with your daughter? Or? I babysit my boys yeah? all summer, but their mama's home with them today. Oh, so okay, okay. Yeah, and the whole family is here in the Charlottesville yeah. area? That's good. That's good. Where are you from? Davenport, Iowa. Okay. Yeah, and uh, my brother Donnie, who's preaching right now, we drove out uh, on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night, and Bobby, who was standing here with us, he's from Athens, Georgia. Uh, Briar's from standing over there in the corner. He's from Virginia, and Chris here with the cross, he's from Virginia, and then there's one other of us. He's from West Virginia, but don't hold that against him. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all doing is what inspired me to read the Bible pretty much in the first place back in um, maybe 94. Maybe really? Like that. In Pensacola, there's a big revival going on. Oh, yeah? In Brownsville. And oh, I remember. Yeah. 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 I remember all that. There. But um, it was 4th of July. I believe it's either 94 or maybe 95. I can't really actually remember. But it was 4th of July. And um, guys were standing on corners with Bibles preaching all through Pensacola, you know, down on the beach and stuff. Yeah. And then, I don't know, for some reason that night I had vision. I got home about 4 o'clock in the morning and I went high or nothing like that. Yeah. And I got, I don't like watching the moon. And um, kind of like what this prophecy is about coming up. You know, I saw stuff in the sky. Yeah. And so the very next day, uh, a girl had given me the New Testament a while back, been on my bookshelf. Uh huh. And so that's what I read first. Yeah. And um, it's amazing reading the Bible for the first time, realizing that these things people say is not really what this is. And I read about some of the stuff I saw, you know, like the angels descending, ascending. I saw all kind of neat stuff that, that night. Uh -huh. It was the moon and a little wisp of cloud, and it was going through the power lines. And I like watching the moon in front of my house go through the power lines. Mm -hmm. And the little wisp of cloud kind of grew. And then it sound, kind of seemed like a silhouette. And I thought of the visions people have of Mary and stuff like that. And at that moment, I was still just like, yeah, just a little cloud. But then, it was growing and changing, was covering the whole moon, and it was like the face of Jesus. And then I was just like, wow. And I mean, then it just changed, and I saw all kind of stuff. I fell on the ground crying, you know, from a vision. Mm. So, mm. I usually don't tell people about that. Mm. But yeah, it was because, probably just because, I don't know, just, you know, I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why that had to happen to me. But I read the Bible every Dave, day. Dave, right? Dave, actually. Dave. I just don't go to church and worship with these people because there's just a lot of false teachings out there. Yeah. I'm just not interested in hearing no more. Yeah. So, so Dave, if you and I were good friends, and you know, we didn't just meet downtown Charlottesville, but I mean, we knew each other for a while, and uh, and you're a Christian, and you and I both know that I'm not, okay? And I come to you one day, and you know, I'm 53. How old are you? 44. Okay, so you're a little younger. So I come to you and I say, you know, Dave, I, I went in for my annual physical. That's what guys my age do. I feel great. 
just got the results back and doctor said they can't even tell me how much time I have to live. They say I have cancer all through my body. You're a Christian, I'm not. I'm scared. I'm scared of dying. What are you going to tell me? I'll tell you about Jesus. Okay, tell me. Tell me about Jesus. Uh, you know, I think you know Jesus. You've heard about Jesus. I think everybody's heard about Jesus. Okay, so why would that matter to me? We're role-playing right now, but as, as your friend who doesn't know Jesus, we both know I don't believe in Jesus. So what's for me? I don't know, man. I don't yeah. know. I'm probably not going to be preaching to you. Okay, all right. So let's switch now. Uh, same scenario. I'm the Christian in this friendship. You're not. You come to me with the bad news. Right? Okay. This is what I would say to you. Right. I'd say, uh, first, I love you. You're my friend. And the last thing I want is for you to suffer uh, through cancer. last thing I want is for you to die. I'm going to pray for you. Um, I don't know if God's going to heal you or not. He's not obligated to. But that's my hope for you. But then I'm going to say, Dave, when you die, you're going to stand before the God you know. You're going to stand before your Creator. And he's You'll probably get mad already, but maybe well, okay. just well, depends on if they're humbled by dying or not. But you know what? If I was, I would be humble. Do we, do, we care, do we care more about the friendship or the soul of the friend? Are you more concerned about, should I be more concerned about you getting upset with me? Or more concerned about where you're going to spend eternity? I don't know, but you know, huh? you can probably see. Well, you know, the Bible says no one's good. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 48, you are to be perfect. You are to be perfect as, heavenly, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Now, you and I don't measure up to that standard, right? I don't, right? No human being does, right? But most of the people in the world are going to be relying on their own perceived goodness when they stand before God, when God has already said, you're not good. So what I would say to you as my friend, Dave, is that when you die and stand before God, He's going to judge you according to the law that He's written on your heart. You know it's wrong to lie, you know it's wrong to steal, you know it's wrong to take God's name in vain. You know all of these things because God's given you a conscience. And because God is good, God must punish sin. And the punishment God determined for sin is eternity in hell. And you're my friend and I love you and I don't want that for you. But this same God who is angry with the wicked every day is also loving, merciful, gracious, and kind. And Dave, he showed his great love some 2,000 years ago when God the Father sent his son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, and without sin. He lived a perfect life from cradle to grave that you and I can't live for a mere you know, few seconds. And then he voluntarily went to the cross. He suffered and died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment you and I rightly deserve for our sins against God. And then three days later, he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. And what God requires of you, Dave, is that you turn from your sin and by faith receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Jesus said, I am the way and the yeah, truth I and the life. Didn't tell nobody all that. Why not? Because I, you know, I probably wouldn't get good. Right. Yeah. All right, so um, what, do you, what do you do for a living or where's your education? Well, what what do you plumber, like to do? Yeah. A plumber, okay. So Dave, if, if I came to you out of the blue, Maybe I saw you working on some plumbing. Uh, it was it commercial, residential, yeah. both? Com commercial? Okay. So I come up to you on a job site, and I see that you're doing what plumbers do. And I say, hey, man, I'm an expert plumber. I can tell you everything you need to know about plumbing. And you're kind of looking at me, sizing me up. And for kicks, you say, all right, man, tell me, what do I need to know about plumbing? Well, it involves pipes. And you got to use some kind of goo to, to, to seal the joints and things like that so that they don't leak. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. all right, okay, well, as a plumber, would you believe I know anything about plumbing? Come on. No. Okay. So here's the hardest question I'm going to ask you. If you would rightly discern, if I told you that or that little about plumbing, that I know nothing about plumbing, how or why should I be sure that you know Christ when you can't and won't tell me how to know Him? That's something I want you to consider. 
right? Because Jesus said in, in Matthew 7, 21 and 23, there will be many who say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many mighty miracles in your name? And Jesus said, I will say to them on that day, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of lawlessness. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, that we should examine ourselves and test ourselves to see if we are actually in the faith. And so that would be my encouragement to you. I don't know your heart. I'm not your judge. There's only one lawgiver and judge. There's only one who's able to save and destroy, and that's Jesus Christ. But, but Dave, if you don't have a heart to share the gospel with other people, and you, don't, and you can't articulate the gospel, and you have no real desire to fellowship with other believers, you ought to be asking yourself, what makes me think I'm saved? Yeah, I don't know about all that. Okay, well. That's what I do on Facebook. Oh, well. But Facebook is where people can go and hide from real relationships. Facebook. I don't remember about all that. Okay, but, well, people you know, do. Maybe you don't, but like, people do. Like Christians need to judge each other, and they post some little scriptures that ain't got nothing to do with that. No? Well, you know I'll what? Get on when, there, I got to yeah. make a bunch of um, scriptures for this. Y'all should read this, and I'll explain what these other scriptures like. Read around that scripture. Yeah. You know? Well, you know? but but Dave, when you stand Only before. Only a few yeah. really know what okay. the Bible says. Okay. But when you, think when you stand before God, your defense will not be. You know what, Tony on Facebook took your verses out of context. Or man, there's a lot of pretending Christians in churches. Or man, I can't find a church that, that doesn't really teach the truth. There's a lot of knucklehead pastors out there putting forth a lot of lies. I don't know what you're saying. What I'm saying is... You're saying that God's telling me I need to be a disciple? <laughs> well, that's what God commands. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Not in a legalistic way. But because, but because you love God for the salvation He's brought in your life. He commanded me to be a disciple? Yeah. If you know Him, yes. Yeah. He commands you to be in fellowship with other people. He commands you through yeah, the, the Great book Commission. Of Jonah, the, the, uh, the book of what? Which yeah, one? Like about Jonah. Oh, okay. I always feel like it's something I'm running from. Okay. All right. Well, Dave, that could very well be your conscience at work, man. How'd it work out for Jonah? When Jonah obeyed God, yeah. but until then, what did he do with Jonah? Right? So you need to consider whether or not you're a follower of Christ on your terms or a follower of Christ on his terms. If you're a follower of Christ on your terms, you're not actually a follower of Christ. You've got Christ following you. That ain't going to work out. That ain't going to work out in the end, man. If I love you, Dave, I'm going to talk to you like this. Because some people, you just going to turn them maybe away from God. You know what? If, if me, a 53-year-old sweaty man from Iowa, can turn people away from God that God has determined to save, I'm God. I guess. And I'm not. And Dave, the reality is, I can't run fast enough to catch people who are running away from God straight to hell because they hate Him. Now, it's the truth that will set you free, Dave. That's what Jesus said. And they remember, they killed Jesus. Not for breaking bread with people, not for having dinner with sinners. They killed Him for what He said to people. And He told them the truth. Repent and believe the gospel. And they murdered Him for it. So I'm going to do exactly what he did. Nowhere near as good. But I'm going to do exactly what Jesus did. And that was love people enough to be more concerned for their souls than for any friendship I might have for them. I'd rather see you in heaven, Dave, and upset you here today. I'd rather have you walking away, cussing me out under your breath, but realizing that you need to come to repentance and faith in Christ. I'd rather that happen than for you and me to be best buds and then you and die and go to hell. What's that? Oh, thank you, brother. Well, that, what the Word of God says about unbelievers doing that is that the Word of the Cross is foolishness to them. 1 Corinthians 1.18, 1 Corinthians 2.14, that, that unsaved man cannot understand that which is spiritual because it's spiritually appraised. Okay. 
All right? Well, now you got to start believing it by faith. You have to stop living See, for your terms. Kind of like almost like you just told me I don't believe it. Well, I don't know and if you I do. might leave here thinking, man, I don't believe it. And just turn away from God because of you. No, not because yeah. of me. Yeah. See, you're using me as a cop out. No. Yeah, I think. Yeah, but that people you, would do that. Not if God's but drawing them to right. himself. No. No, Dave, if you walk away here and you use me as an excuse for turning away from God, you never knew him to begin with. But most if you. People don't. Well, right, most people don't. But if you walk away from here humbling yourself I mean, before the Lord. Are you going to bring them to God? Or is them, you know, maybe if, they, if you're offending people, then no, it ain't. I want you to be offended by the truth. Yeah, by the truth. I don't want you to be offended by me. I want you to be offended by the truth. Because that will reveal the condition of your heart. And so if the truth I'm telling you, which is the gospel, is an offense to you, then you need to flee from your sin and flee to God by faith and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. So you don't stand before Him and say, Hey, God, I read the Bible every day. Depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of lawlessness. God, I, I share scripture with people on Facebook every day. God, I never knew you, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. God's not going to submit to you. God doesn't negotiate with sinners. You got to come to Him on His terms. Just as I had to, just as everyone else has to, who comes to true repentance and faith in Christ. Salvation's of the Lord. And if he wants you, he's going to get you. He is. And there's nothing I can do or say that'll keep that from happening. Because God is greater. Because salvation's of the Lord. It's not of Tony. It's of the Lord. So if you walk away from here saying, I'm going to turn my back on God because I didn't like some of the things Tony said, what I want you to hear over and over and over again is that you never knew Christ. And that you're using me for an excuse. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm saying if. I'm not saying that. Okay, well. The truth will set you free, Dave. Man, I love you. Turn to Christ and live, man.